Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are going to uh, rejoin our Wanderer Alpha here, making a couple of quick passes around Saturn in all of its cinematic excellence. Uh, we have uh, Di or not Dion, Mimus, Mimus to fly past today. Uh, we just got uh, a quick correction to make uh, out here near our apogee. Bring the window back up. We've got one more pass to make here, about a day and two hours before we have to make our burn. And man, it really does look like we're getting a lot closer to some of these moons than I think we are. Even so, still, it looks pretty good. <laughs> it's really cool that we can see this stuff this far out. Uh, about an hour or so left, so we're just going to throttle back the time warp a little bit, and I'm going to shoot right past it. Of course I am. Anyway, avionics controls are now unlocked. Thankfully, they were not uh, after separation of our support fuel tank thing. And uh, apparently the axis is kind of off. This thing is very, very difficult to make point in the direction I want. And I think it's because uh, any two of the booms are not quite aligned on an axis, or I'm just not aligned on an axis, but either way, it just really does not want to cooperate with me right now. And uh, I guess somehow, using MechJeb, the uh, last time I was out at this spacecraft, I turned off SAS, or MechJeb disabled SAS, and so it's, uh, it's a little wiggly. <laughs> uh, right past the node. Dang it. It's only an 80 meter per second correction. We just have lots of fuel on this thing, so we can actually uh, make lots of fun corrections. I'm not really so worried about the budget. We've actually been extra careful about our fuel budget for this spacecraft so far. Our scientific equipment, however, not so much. Uh, I was really hoping to be a little bit more on point with this, because this is the correction that's supposed to put us uh, on target. So I'm going to do something I never really do and bring up MechJeb's smart uh, ASS module, set it to node, and uh, let it just get me angled in there. Fantastic. And then just uh, hold down the H key and uh, try to zip through the rest of this correction. Yeah, it is not coming very quickly as we are still wandering off the node. I think we are a little off balance, which was mitigated by our heavy uh, orbit insertion stage kind of mitigating some of that, and of course the added thruster power that added also helped kind of mitigate some of this. Uh, the big problem with the spacecraft is actually battery consumption. Uh, those two RTGs don't provide us quite enough power since we've got the uh, visual imaging thing going. Our antennas, all like four of them, we've got two short range, our primary dish, and then one support dish, which is currently angled at Titan. Uh, that is meant to be a support measure, both for the mission that are on point now and this mission. It was also a uh, backstop uh, in case we needed to bounce the signal from this to our Titan orbiter in order to get signal home. Uh, but then I edited the save file for the spacecraft and swapped out the uh, non-working, non-RP0 dish for this uh, Voyager antenna, which does work. So we could actually probably turn that... Secondary dish off. Yeah, we'll worry about it in a little bit. Uh, about 16 and a half meters per second left on this correction. Hopefully it goes smoothly. Maybe we'll get an encounter out of it. Uh, I am watching the rendezvous planner numbers uh, so that I don't have to keep swapping out to the map view. And uh, our separation at closest approach is the figure that I am currently very interested in. We're down to about 200 kilometers now. Oh, 80, 32, okay. So now it's just gonna be a bunch of tapping random keys trying to get that separation at closest approach. Uh, as close as I can get it, 32, not bad. Let's uh, try some lateral shifting, see if that doesn't help. Uh, nope, nope, 29, 25. I thought I saw 22 there, but now we're starting to wiggle. Yeah, mech jab, you're chasing the node. Let's turn that off. Let's kill the node entirely. Just leave it on kill rotation. Yeah, now we're up to almost 100 kilometers. More than 100 kilometers. Oh, good. Excellent. 
This is going about as well as you'd expect. There we go. That's a, that's a noticeable difference. 45. I know we can get it down to 20. We saw 20 before. Let's just uh, figure out which axis we need to be uh, moving on in order to make that happen. There we go. 16, 13, 10. Oh, yeah. Let's just dial it in there nice and close. Seven kilometers. Good enough for me. Let's kill the tank. Render the RCS inoperable for a moment. Okay. And now we're just going to try to transfer some fuel around, see if this doesn't help with our turning axis a little bit. Bring that uh, weight uh, towards the center line a little bit more. And maybe it'll help keep us stable or something. And also having some ballast available on these tanks means when I figure out where uh, the imbalance is, I can move some fuel around to help correct for it. Oh, hey, look, this little tank needs to be topped off too. Let's just go ahead and in. It'll only take like 10 minutes, 20 minutes or so to transfer 10 liters of fuel. All right, perfect. That's good and topped off. All right, I guess we can uh, get rid of these windows. There we go. And let's see what we bought. Oh. Oh, okay. So separation at closest approach, I guess, figures for the uh, center mass of our target. And uh, not exactly a flyby. I just kind of assumed we would be like six kilometers off the uh, the surface. Yeah, that's not the that's not a thing. Okay then. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, it shouldn't take us uh, too long to correct for this. I would like to fly over this famous crater, as I'm sure it is. It is its own biome. All right. There's periapsis. Let's just bring this uh, a little more equatorially, and let's see if we can't just bring it in eight kilometers, five, five kilometers. I don't think there's going to be some terrain feature. Oh, yeah, RCS still fighting with me. Seven and a half before it uh, does any more with that. Let's just go ahead and relock the fuel tank. We shouldn't have to make any more adjustments before our flyby. So, Mimus Periapsis. Let's go ahead and bring up Flight Computer. And what we got here? One day, seven hours, and 15 minutes. So, plug that in. One day, seven hours. 15 mic. Leave the second field blank and just let it count down. All right, let's uh, bring up Alpha Zero in our queued actions and then just hit toggle. Let's pay attention to the timer here. Escapes in 38 seconds. Oh man, so we're going to spend like what, 40 seconds, 50 seconds in the sphere of influence here? Oh boy. <laughs> okay. Uh, how long until our encounter? I doubt there's high space science, but I'd really, if we hit more than one biome, I'd like to make sure that we can, I don't know, hit them all the biomes. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Seven hours, 14 minutes. We'll just let the counter count itself down. Yeah, you know, 10 seconds to kill. And then we'll just uh, toggle. I guess. A bunch of things. Uh, come on, KSP. Quit stuttering. Three, two, one. Start clicking. Click. We'll just uh, space them out by a couple of seconds. One more. All right. That should be okay. And then our escapes in 17 hours, 14 minutes, 40 seconds. So, yeah, we're going to spend about 35 seconds flying past this thing. So... Hopefully, uh, this repeated running of an action group will just uh, get us all the data we need. We'll just hit this a few more times. You know, hey, why not? All right, and yeah, there's move this down just a little bit. We can kill SAS. We don't need that anymore. And so here's the plan. Uh, I don't think we'll have actually time to radio stuff in, so I'm going to bring up this window. Where is the Ranger Block 3 core? There we go. So we're going to try to transfer info from our 
experiments into the Ranger Block 3 core. For some reason, we have four or five experiments in there currently. That's interesting. Oh, hey, and a uh, scan set bit of data from God knows where. All right. Okay, so that should be all that stuff. So hopefully as soon as the science come in, comes in, we just hit keep, 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 and then transfer it all into the Ranger core. And uh, hopefully then we get to keep all the science. We'll just set up a little Kerbal alarm clock reminder to pop us out of time warp exactly one minute before we get there. And now we can just uh, time warp on in. Oh. Yeah, there's that thing that I ran for absolutely no reason. We can just reset all of these. Nothing fancy. No big deal. All right, let's... Uh, Rattling back time warp. But, okay. Oh, I guess maybe it was adjusting our targeting. Sure. Whatever works for you. All right. Let's uh let's get on and get there. Through the rings. Whoa. That came up quick. There's our remote tech alarm or yeah, the alarm clock reminder. So Okay. Uh we're still like 20 seconds out. From periapsis, where's all the ones that I ran? What? Okay. Yeah, we got some battery. We're showing good connection. Oh. Oh, I'm dumb. I queued up a whole lot of the wrong action group. The wrongiest of wrong action groups. Action group one, which uh, I think was the the boot. So, yeah, and actually, I think that was for the old spacecraft. Boot one should be the one that turns off all our comms equipment. Well, at least we can get some very pretty screenshots while we completely waste this flyby. At least our inclination is kind of on point. I mean, that just looks awesome, though. Dang it. Uh, oh, that was, wow. How many of you were like yelling that at the comments for minutes now before I realized that I just queued up a whole bunch of action group one? I'm, dang it, yeah. Oh, it doesn't change it by hitting it up there. I have to, yeah, no, not action group 100. Action group 10 would have been what I wanted to do. Uh that was all right. Let's get rid of our signal delay here. Yeah, here comes a, another action group one in about plus six seconds or so. Wow. Okay, then. All right. Well, let's just, uh, yeah, one hour and 15 minutes. We're, we're, huh. We can get rid of all of that. We're not going to need it. Probably not going to need you, flight computer. Well, yeah. Okay. It, it still says we're spaced just above Mimis's Herschel Peak. Well, that's interesting. Very interesting. Uh, we kind of had this problem at Deimos at Mars and more recently at uh, Dione here at Saturn. Or it just wouldn't really let us leave the SOI. It'll take a F9 or F5, F9. So yeah, see, we're still we're still technically here. Huh. Well, uh, when in Rome. Yeah. Let's uh let's add some radio in commands. I'm going to cover my own screw ups by. <laughs> blatantly exploiting this flaw in the game's physics because I am a dirty cheater, obviously. So yeah, as we time warp away, we're still technically in this uh, SOI. But uh, in a 
about a minute or so, we'll get that random radio in that I hit earlier, and then I've got two more coming after that. And this random multispectral imaging uh, command that I sent just for, yeah, I didn't really have a reason to do it. But we are uh, still in space high over Mimis's Herschel, not the Herschel Peak. So uh, I did, in fact, miss a biome. I'll take that as my uh, obligatory punishment, even though I'm obviously uh, exploiting some stuff here. Uh, all right, I promise in future I will schedule another proper flyby here and uh, do this the correct way and maybe hit more than one biome that pass. Huh? There's a uh, Venus and Earth. We should have a good clear shot for signal, even though we are... Um, facing the wrong way. All right, about five seconds to kill, and then we can start collecting some data. There we go. Awesome. Uh, not enough electric charge. Ah, oh. and where did the rest of the radio ends go? We've got connection again. I forgot. Stupid batteries. Yeah, ooh, they are dead, dead. All right, so in a minute, or 1.65 minutes, Time warp a little bit. I'm just going to hit save a bunch. Oh, there's our multispectral. No science, no data. We'll just reset that. Kind of pointless. All right, here we go. Now we'll just keep experiment. Oh, a bunch of stuff built. What? Why did we only get like the one? Oh, it says we got 12. Hmm. Huh. What'd we get here? All right, well, actually, first, Ranger Block 3 core. All of those. Uh, Multi-spectrum imaging scan. We'll transfer that. Magnetometer. Transfer that. Infrared radiometer. Barometer. Micrometeorite. Geiger Mueller. And the thermometer. We'll transfer all that information over. So we didn't even get a full complement of science on that. There's no avionics got run. Apparently I did a terrible job of setting up my action groups. Yeah, all right. No big deal. Uh, I'll take the punishment. But we're going to have to jump back to the Space Center anyway to let this thing's batteries recharge. And in the meantime, I guess we can go ahead and deactivate this thing, right? Uh, yeah, no electric charge. And maybe not having that thing on would help us out a little bit. Uh, man, it might be so useful to have it later. Yeah, okay, fine. Deactivate. That'll only take like an hour and a half to get there. No big deal. We'll also turn off these short-range comms where we don't need them. They're just kind of... I know they don't pull very much energy, but... Every little bit helps, so we'll just uh, time warp on until those commands make connection. I think the only reason we have... Oh, no connection now. I was just about to talk about how those RTGs provide just enough power to push our main comms antenna. Alright, well, there's uh, medium-range comms, short-range comms all folded up. We are still in space high. Oh, over Mimis's lowlands now. Whatever. It's... Yeah, okay. We should be able to have connection with Earth. We don't, I guess. Yeah, okay, good. That's still on. Just as out of power. No big deal. All right, well, I'm going to have to jump back to the Space Center, let this thing charge up, and then we'll uh, think about another flyby in future. Anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.